something about panel beaters making intersections or something. Exactly. And it really is. Mm. It's illogical, really, to sure. have to put this responsibility back on Parliament mm. and say, people are recommending to you that you mm. make these changes. The Electoral Commission, you know, mm. has been kind of the conduit for that message. What do you think? So mm -hmm. it will be interesting to mm. see. So we've got what looks to be a likely vote to keep MMP, mm. but as you say, it's a crazy old world. It Maybe is. things will go different. If there is a vote to change from MMP, what's your prediction about the replacement system, the Part B, where yeah. people get to choose between the alternative voting systems? What do you think is most likely to be chosen there? Well, I think first past the post has fairly, I think it's always, hasn't it, been the leading mm. favourite. Um, but, you know, the thing that, again, the thing that I was interested in in the discussion, the public meetings and things, people have really struggled with that second part of the paper mm -hmm. because people who were voting to keep MMP just didn't know what to do with that second half of the ballot sure. paper. I had people ringing me this morning saying, you know, I'm quite stressed about this. Right. I don't know. I, hand on heart, I can't say that yes. I would prefer any of those systems. Yes. Um, so it'll be quite interesting to see what people do with that mm. second half of the paper. You know, how many people choose just not to do it because they simply can't, mm. and for those who do, what their preferences mm. are. So what did you do with it? Um, I did have a wee bit of a dilemma myself, but then I decided, you know, voting is such an honour and a privilege, mm -hmm. I just had to vote, given sure. the opportunity to do it, so I did pick one. And which one was it? I don't think I can remember now, Andrew, no, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I changed my mind so many times. I, I'll tell you what I chose. If you well, I chose STV. Actually, so did I. Right, right. And I had gone in there planning to choose First Past the Post Interesting. because um, I thought that that would be an easy campaign for the public to understand as a runoff between yes. those two. Uh, and then at the, at the last minute, I just couldn't do it, so I chose STV. I wouldn't be completely unhappy with a New Zealand run under STV. No. I, I, I agree. I would be completely. I, I would be very unhappy about a New Zealand run under first past the post. Yep. But a New Zealand run under STV, I, I guess the I bit, can live with. I guess the bit that I think gets lost mm -hmm. is that overall party vote. I, right. I mean, I really do like. I mean, that really guarantees proportionality where STV. Quite. Well, it doesn't guarantee it. Sorry, but no. it gets as close as you can. Yes, quite. STV, you still really. Um, yes, you get you, know, you get it, but by a second mechanism. It's exactly, not the, it's not it the, still like, has exactly. the capacity to produce a few. Sure strange results. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it is also, frankly, my experience in, in working um, with public education around Dunedin's yeah, voting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, I'm going to say it is an easy voting system to use. The act of casting your vote is pretty yeah. straightforward. But for people who really want to understand yes. how that vote is counted, it can get really difficult. Yes. To it's the idea of, you know, you start chopping off bits of vote exactly. and started handing it on, but hang on, people. my votes, uh, exactly. Yep. And the other thing I think people find hard when you tell them you have to trust the computer. Exactly. People start people thinking, like well, hang on. Despite the fact they're driving cars and flying planes, well, they don't like this trusting. Is not right, right, <laughs> right. So the referendum campaign, I think it's fair to say, was not that big a deal to people. No. I think it's sort of flown under the radar. This election, I think, overall has been quite a quiet affair. Mm -hmm. But the referendum campaign in particular has been quite a quiet, even more quiet than that. Do you think that indicates we just didn't need to have it? I really do. I think it indicates that this wasn't a, a groundswell from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, the two main lobby campaigns have done a reasonable job of getting as much airtime as mm -hmm. they can and of, of trying to engage people where they could. But it seems pretty obvious to me that this wasn't something that came from the people this time. In fact, sure. you know, I think, again, I've, I've picked up from people that they're kind of annoyed that all this money has been spent on it and their questions very quickly move into, so this review, you know, I don't like this and I don't like that about MMP. Can those things be changed and fixed? Yeah, yeah. So that raises the interesting question, why did we end up with it? What was your take on why we got it? Well, I just think, I mean, you have to go back so far. I've actually mm -hmm. tried to kind of trace back through. Yeah. Um, it's just been one of those perpetuating myths. I think the problem really was, despite the fact that it wasn't promised, mm. people thought that it was, and it was something that the National Party in particular have campaigned on, you know, fairly consistently sure. for quite a while. Mm. Um, and then and it came to be. So it was a promise that got made, and once the promise was made, it had to be kept, and so we ended up with it. Exactly. Anyway. Which is, you know, ironically not unlike the original experience well, exactly. anyway, except in reverse. Quite. The promise was kind of made by mistake. Yes, that's right. And then yeah. it had to be kept. Yeah. The thing that I... Sorry to no, interrupt. No, 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 but please it, keep. You know, it is... I think it's... It is... What we did, first of all, in the 90s was so unusual. What we're doing now has just got us out of the league of electoral reform. Quite. I mean, you know, nobody else has done this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Changed their electoral system and then had another think yeah, about back. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
you know, my concern is I hope that, that whatever is decided, that that's it. You know, right. we've really got to be done with this. We don't right. want to set the precedent of thinking, oh, that wasn't such a tidy election. Mm -hmm. Let's think about our electoral system and, you know, mm. try and stir up another referendum. Mm. Seriously, it, whatever's mm. decided needs mm. to be. Mm. Going slightly wider, because we, we're going to have this referendum, mm. and as we say, if it plays out like it looks like it is, and there's a vote to keep MMP, there's going to be a review of the MMP system. Running alongside that, there's also going to be this review of the constitution that mm. looks likely to happen. National and the Maori Party set it up yep. last term on the assumption that we get some sort of national party government with some likely Maori party input. Mm. It looks likely that review will carry on. It's kind of odd to be having two separate reviews of different bits and very important bits of our overall governmental structure. Yes. Yeah. It is. I yeah. agree. What would you what do you think we're gonna see out of that second stream of, of review, the, the constitutional, constitutional review? Run? Yeah. Um probably not very much mm. would be my guess. I think again it's one of those things that came from some of the negotiations and um, it, it, uh, my preference would be that if there is going to be some kind of significant decisions made that it not be done through that kind of forum sure. anyway. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it, it is. It seems to have started off with a bit of a whimper yep. rather than a hiss and a roar. So I can't. I can't see that it's going to gain momentum and turn into anything terribly significant. But no. you know, again, I've seen some crazy stuff happen. So perhaps, right. perhaps not. But yeah. I do think that of all of these, I mean, the bit that sits kind of in between those two questions of the electoral and the constitutional is the issue of the Maori seats. Mm, quite. And I do think that that. I mean, that's been protected from these discussions by the agreements between um, National and the Maori. Party, mm -hmm. but I do think that that's bubbling along again mm. as an issue that's mm. going to sometime come into public discussion, mm. and that's going to be a really interesting mm. matter is, for you know is. how that plays out. One of the interesting things that I don't think really arose during the referendum campaign was what, how many Maori seats you'd end up with under each of the alternatives. Oh yeah, that was fascinating, yeah. and it wasn't. I don't think it was a, a tremendously. It wouldn't have been a straightforward decision for Maori mm. to make about which sure. electoral system. I mean, you know, admittedly, o overall MMP would deliver them, you know, the, probably the best opportunity sure. of representation in terms of. Um, in people in Parliament, mm. but as you say, if you went back to first past the post, you'd immediately boost the Māori seats to 12, mm. and that's people representing Māori constituencies. Mm. So that's a pretty, you know, yeah. that would be a pretty um, appealing alternative, mm -hmm. except for the fact, of course, that those seats aren't protected in yeah. any way. So I suspect the first thing then that would happen would be that people would go, "What? Yeah, you know, right, how right. did that happen? We right. need to think about this." So. Yeah. Being strategic, I think, it would probably still be a preference for most uh, voting in Māori seats to keep that MMP option. Well, the thing that Māori can see is under MMP they have had a share of government. You know, Absolutely. they've been there for the last course, three years. Yeah, and, and that minor party has been a really strong... Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. So your prediction for the referendum? Well, I mean, you know, I'm awful yep. at predictions, but I do think it looks like MMP, um, you know, will stay sure. and, will, and will have the review kick in. Mm -hmm. And your prediction for the election overall? Oh, still, I'm awful with predictions, so ACT won't govern alone. Can I, <laughs> can I say that confidently? Sure, you're going to say that Apart after our that. previous two <laughs> guests leave? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, no, apart from that, I, I guess rather than prediction, it would be a preference. I mean, again, uh, it, it does look like the you know kind of the war's over. I think that yep. it will be a national government. Mm -hmm. But um, my preference, again, thinking about our constitutional issues, would be that they don't govern alone. We have so few checks sure. on our executive yeah. that I think you have to have some some influence in there. An effective parliament is what we want delivered out of right. this right. Um, election. Right. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming in and Pleasure. joining us. Thanks for the invitation. We've got Bryce back. OK. Bryce and I well, are going to chat briefly, and then I believe we're going to be joined by uh, Tim Watkin on the phone very soon. Yes. So okay. thank you once again, Janine, and Thanks we'll much, wait guys. and see what Have happens for the rest of the night. OK. <laughs> OK, so MMP, it's looking pretty good at the moment for MMP. Um, I haven't checked the results recently. Why don't you do it on mean, Magic Computer? I'll see what I can find. But, but nonetheless, it's certainly the case that um, everyone was expecting MMP to um, be able to uh, be retained. So it's 54% to keep, 42% yeah. No surprises there. Not really, no. no. And once again, these are the advance votes. That's right. Oh, no, OK, these are the advance votes. Right, so these are votes that have been cast in polling places before voting day. Right. So these have been counted over the last few 
hours. Um, so this could be up to about 10% of the actual whole overall referendum vote. And what would be the nature that's any different about those advance votes? Oh, well, it looks well, like we talked to him. I think we believe we're going to be joined on the uh, speakerphone by Tim Watkin. Um, Tim, hi, how are you? I'm well. How are you, sir? Very well, thank you very much. So we're, we're live on uh, Vote Chat, the Otago University uh, election night uh, special. Uh, Tim Watkin, who is a uh, political pundit here at pundit.co.nz, a well-travelled, knowledgeable man of the world. Uh, so, Tim. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> yeah, well, I could do this all night. <laughs> early thoughts, what are we seeing? Um, oh, God, it is, it is so, so early. Um, the referendum, I don't know if you've been talking much about that, but interesting how far um, NMPR is ahead uh, with the early numbers. The, the reasoning that, that I'd seen um, in the last couple of weeks has been the expectation that if MMP was close early, it should, have, it should do enough to, to stay ahead. Um, and the fact that it's actually comfortably ahead at this point suggests that um, what well, I guess that a lot of us thought uh, from a distance, which was that the, um, you know, the mood for change is, is, is hardly there and, and it looks like it's, it's probably going to stay the way it's going to stay. It's just what we've been talking about and that essentially was our view as well. Uh, the polls had had it consistently ahead, so in a way the polls are just being borne out. Um, what, what I think so. There is, an, there is an interesting argument. I mean, there is a bit of an argument that some of the early vote will be travelling um, students and so forth, mm. and so that could, um, it might not be quite, quite as conservative as early vote usually is. The other argument that I've heard made is the suggestion that uh, the Winston Peters factor kicked in in the last week or mm, so, yeah. the, the fear factor of Winston, and that could mean that the early vote doesn't reflect the fear of Winston, and, and the fear of Winston might have driven people back towards uh, uh, first past the post or, or some some kind of change. Mm -hmm. So, look, you know, it might not be as indicative as we thought, but I still would have thought that uh, that we're probably on track to, to keep it. Yes. Okay, so Tim, it's Bryce Edwards here. Um, hey, Bryce. Hi, hi, Tim. So, what about the other results? At the moment, we're having the early booths coming in, which you know tend to be more the rural booths. Um, you know, they. Tend towards the right, um, and I'm surprised that National is as low as they are. I think it's about 50%. Um, what, about, what do you think? Yeah, look, that's an interesting point, actually. I mean, I, they started off 50, didn't they? And I see they're 49.7 a few minutes ago. So yeah. um, if, if that's part of their trending down, as you'd expect, I, oh, geez, I mean, it's so, it's so early, there could be a bit of fluctuation there. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I think you're, you're right on the, on the button there, which does make Epsom and Ohario... Yeah. <laughs> really interesting, isn't it? Because, yeah. um, and indeed all the Murray seats, because how useful uh, the Murray Party are going to be. If, if National does um, end up, you know, certainly not with a five, but with a four, but even with a, a middling four, then mm. you get into a situation where the Murray Party, if they can pull their numbers, are, are very powerful. Mm. And we've got we've got green the greens actually they're at about ten percent but again I think that's the sort of vote that will go up substantially as we get the urban booths coming in. Um, you would have thought I would have thought that they'd be relatively happy to yeah. to be knocking on ten percent now. Yeah. Um, thinking they, that 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 to me says they will they will definitely get a double digit, um, which I think is probably their you know their their, their goal anything anything you know above ten I would have thought they would be um, over the moon. Yeah. Interesting to see New Zealand first starting high too. Yes, and I'm not quite sure what to make of that in terms of the way things are likely to change, whether that's likely to go up or down. What do you think? Well, I know that last time they started below five and they stayed below five. Yeah. This time, this time um, three years ago on the night, they were below five. Uh, so if, you know, they are higher than they were um, this time, which I, yeah, may, may, may mean um, that they can hold on there. They certainly, I think, would have needed to have started above five to, to, to feel as though they're in like a shot. And I guess at this point you say, all we can say is that they certainly have a chance. OK, and we're looking at the results for Epsom at the moment, and it's looking to me like John Banks is, is back in. I mean, it's early days, of course, but with um, about 6% of the booths counted, we have John Banks on just over 2,000 votes and Goldsmith at 1,700. So to me that suggests there's enough margin in there. Um, yeah, there could well be, although I think at 3 or 4% it was the other way. So um, I, the first chart I saw of the night when they were, I think, about 3%, they, they had uh, 
goldsmith ahead. So maybe too soon, maybe well, too soon. I should also point out that Bryce is uh, up to have to work for Winston Peters' next election campaign if New Zealand First is returned to government after a rash bet that he made live on camera. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're treating his predictions with just a grain of salt. OK, and in Ohario, we currently have... Charles Cheval on 1,400 and Peter Dunn on 1,500. So almost 1,600, in fact. So he's just ahead at the moment. Um, Which I think, and I don't know how he the boots well enough to, to know how that's likely to go, but I, I did, I was interested in like, the Katrina Shanks vote there. Yeah. Um, it seemed, what's she on now? 777, so... She's That's relatively high. I would have thought. Yeah. I would have thought you know, Dunn might be a little bit worried about that. I think he so. Really wants her vote to collapse completely. Mm. Well, but, Shanks didn't quite play the game that she was supposed to. Was did she? She got the directive no, she, to. She certainly didn't. No, she was supposed to just go for the party vote, and that was the directive from the prime minister essentially. But um, it doesn't look like she's played ball on that one. No, Paul Goldsmith was very well behaved to the point of you know pulling out, <laughs> <laughs> pulling out, pulling out um, um, uh, billboards that, yeah. that, yeah. that, that uh, were promoting him. Obviously, unofficial ones, but but uh, he certainly um, stuck on message religiously. But no, Chris, Katrina did her own thing a bit, and boy, if if National does doesn't get there by itself, and and uh, you know Future does fail to cross the line, then um, she might be in for a bit of a um, telling off. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Now, what else? Sorry, um, what what else are you looking at tonight? What else is interesting you to watch in particular? Um, the Maori seats, I think, particularly interesting. I also see that we're up to the 4.5 percent. We've got Mana at 1.1. Mm. Now, that's interesting. If Mana, you know, that's pretty close to getting in its sight. So I'm really mm. interested to see whether and it's like we'll join um, mm. Hone Harawera with mana. That could make for a, an interesting bit of um, energy <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and liveliness in the house next time. Yes. Um, and, but, but yeah, the Maori party vote looks pretty low, um, mm. but the seats I think we'll be watching, you know, they could be a two-party, two-seat party, they could be a four-seat party, and that mm. difference could be crucial. Yeah. And just one last question, what do you think of turnout? What's your feeling been around the streets? Any idea? Oh, look, not a lot, I've got to say. Um, I'm um, mostly playing with my two-year-old today as much as I could, so <laughs> I couldn't tell you much from the streets, but um, certainly the people I've, I've spoken to briefly, um, spoke to Mike Williams briefly, and he, he thought it was um, middling, I guess you would say, right. the, uh, the, the turnout. Not too high, not too low, but a Goldilocks turnout. Yeah, well, that's, that's very good. Well, look, thank you very much for talking to us, Tim. We will try to get back in touch with you later in the evening when things are perhaps firming up just a little bit more. But, yeah, you enjoy the night and just enjoy what's happening. You're most welcome. Have fun. Thank you. See you, guys. Oh, that's very okay. interesting. Yeah. Um, well, like we were saying, I think the national vote is lower than mm -hmm. um, I would have expected at this stage of the night because it's it's less than 50%. Mm -hmm. I can imagine it dropping another 1.5%. Um, so, yeah. um, you know, in the end, I think we're going to yeah. get to something like 485 um, Well, I... I I'm not going to get into putting exact figures, figures on, on it because okay. I've tried that and I've already... But you are right. I mean, this this is when they really should be peaking yeah. now and it's likely to drop from here. So that, I mean, that's then starting to get interesting. I mean, what also is interesting is that, you know, the Maori Party, their vote is... It's only 1.3% at the moment. Mm. They've got them down for three electorate seats, but say they get four. Four electorate seats with one point, that's two overhang. That overhang is getting quite considerable, that's right. which could make things difficult for National to govern. Well, it means that National if, would be unable to govern just with uh, yeah. the, uh, their own votes. They would then need to start making the deals. Looks like even if ACT does pull it off, they're only pulling enough vote just under the two... Uh, just to under enough to get a second person in, that may change as well. Yeah. So things are still very much in play. It's not the foregone conclusion that no. I perhaps thought it was going to be no. uh, going into this. So S Still uncertainty. Sure. Absolutely. Interesting talking to Janine while you were out yeah. um, about the, uh, the referenda result and Tim saying the same, that essentially it looks like the votes there for MMP, mm. with all the caveats that he was putting around it, that perhaps this advance vote that's been counted, because it's important to remember that mm. the votes that we're seeing tonight are votes that were cast before election day, mm. and there's only going to be a representative sample. Only those votes are going to be counted, counted tonight. tonight. So yeah. the result we see tonight is not the final one, mm. and we won't actually see the final one until about the 10th of December. So 
even tonight, if it looks like MMP's in, it may then turn and be out by the final result, but it would right. be unusual, you'd have to say. I, yeah, mm. we can see it as a strong indicative um, exactly. sort of outcome, yes. at least. Yeah. Okay, so what about Labour? At the moment, 26% um, again, because the left... Um, parties don't tend to do so well in the early count sure. because of the big mm -hmm. uh, rural booths yep. um, or the small rural booths coming yep. in first. Um, they're likely to go up. Um, they're at just about 27%. Probably not as high as 30. No. What do well, you think? yeah, again, I mean, we're only at 4.5% of the vote count, so I think it's difficult to know just how much of this is mm. going to swing around. But this shows that the Labour Party vote hasn't collapsed in the same way as Nationals collapsed back in 2002. No. It's not going to be an absolute nightmare wipeout election for Labour. They are going to want it to come back up from there, though, because at that um, they're only getting uh, 33 seats. Yep. I see that the uh, elections... Uh, results page has them ahead in 22 electorates, 11 list. There's yep. going to be a lot of people that, um, well, up to 34 now, it just yep. shows how quickly this changes. <laughs> They'll lose a lot of good people and a lot of their yep. new people, a lot of their rebuilding people if this carries That's on. That's right. Mm. So, um, what do you think is going to happen to Phil Goff if he doesn't, um, if he isn't able to put together a government after tonight? Well, you've got to figure that if Phil Goff's unable to put together a government and Labour's vote goes down from where yeah. it was in 2005, they're going to be looking for someone else to carry it. I That's mean, Phil Goff, I think, has campaigned quite well. He's yeah, campaigned above he? expectations. Yeah. At the same time, Labour's gone backwards from where they started in the yeah. campaign. So for all we may say, he looks like he's done a good job. Yeah. He hasn't won the votes. That's right. And I think the overall, the overall narrative is going to be he's had his turn, mm. he didn't produce the results, mm. um, he's gone, even mm. though he might have been seen to do quite well. That's right. Because these days, um, leaders don't last long in their leadership role if mm. they can't produce the results. It wasn't always the case. Mm. Um, people like Bill Rowling mm. could lose numerous elections. Yes. Um, it's probably, they wouldn't it's be probably wrong. a reason why that's changed when you, uh, maybe when you yes. see that... Yeah. Uh, Past historical experience has been that you know once someone's been on the shelf and they're a bit sh shop worn, yeah, there's a tendency to move on and look at the new bright thing. Mm. Okay, so what about Labour's campaign? How would you judge it apart from Phil Goff, who's done mm. fairly well? I thought they had the better of the advertising, to be honest. Yeah, I thought their advertising was it was just a better yeah. image, better kind That's of. Right. I thought Nationals looked a bit hackneyed, a bit kind of doing it by the numbers, to be yep. honest. Uh, I do wonder whether they made a tactical mistake in deciding to, to downplay Phil Goff at the start, yeah. given that the media was always going to focus on him mm. as the... It was hopeful thinking that they could just put yeah. the policy stuff exactly. up front and yep. hope that that mm -hmm. would all be... Uh, I think they were, you know, this is always a terrible word to use in politics, but courageous in a lot yep. of the politics they ran. I think, uh, sorry, a lot of the policies they ran, I think those are policies more for the future than for necessarily this election. Yeah. Um, Okay. They did try the asset sales. Speaking of which, this sounds like the yes. campaign spokesperson yeah. for Labour yep. coming through. So, uh, welcome. We have Grant Robertson, the Labour Party campaign spokesperson on the phone. Uh, Grant, uh, welcome to uh, Otago University Election Night Special. G'day, Andrew. How are you going? Very well, thank you. Hi, Grant. Bryce Edwards here. G'day, Bryce. So, we're looking at the early results coming in. We're looking at the, uh, the figures. What are your thoughts? Uh, yes, uh, it's um, there's seemingly a trend, gentlemen. You're both um, learned people, and you can probably pick it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, certainly showing um, national hovering there, sort of around that 49 area, and us around the, the high 20 or the mid to high 20s. Um, uh, one thing I'd say about the advance vote mm. is that um, last time we picked up about three percent, and yep. national dropped about three percent within the advance vote. Yep. No, we have been making that point that these early numbers are weighted towards national because of where they're coming from and so on. Uh, so it's still up in the air a bit. Uh, New Zealand First is polling perhaps better than we, well, I certainly expected. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, it's quite clear that Winston came through in the campaign, didn't he? And I think the, the cup of tea was the, was the <laughs> moment that gave Winston the oxygen, probably one of the most ill ill-judged beverage drinking events ever in the history <laughs> of politics. Uh, and so I think that, yeah, I think Winston's clearly got hold of that. 
probably an element of, of, of protest vote in there, people who were going off national and maybe didn't want to vote for Labour. Yeah. Um, we think that where a bit of that came from and we possibly lost a little bit too. So, you know, first rule of New Zealand politics, never, never rule out Winston Peters. Yeah, well, that's right. Do you think he's stealing Labour votes at the moment, t today? I think there are some, Bryce, yeah. I, I would say that, I would say, in our polling up until the election, he seemed to be taking more votes from National than he did from Labour. Um, but, but I suspect there's a bit of our vote in there as well. Mm. In terms of the campaign, and you were the campaign spokesperson, not the campaign manager, we should make clear, how do you think it went? I mean, I know it sounds strange for people when they're seeing these results, but, but we felt that it went really well. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we set ourselves the goal of being bold, of being a little bit edgy, mm. of, of yep. putting out the policies that we believed in and, and promoting those. And, you know, and I think we, we pretty much set the policy agenda. That's partly because National didn't really have any. Mm. But, um, but still, you know, we felt that we were able to get our issues out there. Um, I think Phil performed strongly. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, there will always be the odd hiccup here and there, but sure. I thought overall he performed really well. And simple things too, like I think the look of our um, advertising and so on was yeah. good. You know, it was superb. I, um, yeah. yeah. Mm. But isn't that frustrating that you clearly had the better campaign, um, yeah. but uh, um, it didn't really manage to turn things around? It's hugely frustrating, Bryce. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, that, that politics, though, people make their decisions about, about elections in different ways and at different times. Um, it's very, very rare in New Zealand for a one-term government to be thrown out yeah. and never for a national one, you know, there to be a yeah. national party one-term government. So, yeah, I think it is frustrating, but all, you can only do what you can do. And, and we do feel like we ran a strong campaign and, and, and one that, that got across our messages. You're sounding slightly downbeat. Do you think it's Labour's chance of forming the next government's gone yet, or you still got a bit of hope? No, no, I don't think it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, but it's going to be, you know, it's looking increasingly difficult for us to do that sure. uh, to, when you look at what we've got there. But, you know, no, nothing's over until it's over. Mm -hmm. and, and if we can see ourselves picking up some points over the night, and, you know, or both of you will remember the 2005 election, and, yeah. and you know, it's always right. very important to, to keep looking at, at what booths have and haven't come in. And look, at the moment, I'm looking at a, at a screenshot that says 5.3 percent of the votes being counted. Yeah, so, right. yeah, we won't get carried away. No. But no, obviously, we know we've always known that mm. putting a government together on the terms that we would be doing it will be challenging. Mm. But this is an uncertain um, night, I suspect, and there's going to be a number of. Uh, interesting electorate contest yeah. in my Yeah, so my what, what, friend, what are those for you? Well, um, um, my good friend uh, Lino Tirakatni and Te Tonga, I think is going to be a very, very interesting race. Mm. Um, you know, it's gonna, I think that's going to be close right till the end of the night, um, mm -hmm. so I think he may, he may well pull that off. Epsom, looking like Mr Banks might have it. Sure. Um, so that's... Um, so yeah, you, that's you, you think national, the national voters there finally listened to the call and did what was expected of them? As they did last time, and of course the poll, the, the mainstream polls weren't quite right last time either. I, sure. I, I suspect from a political scientist's point of view, there's an interesting question there. I think people, when they're asked, can't, national voters can't bring them to say <laughs> that they're not supporting national. Yeah. But actually, when they get to the polling booth, they'll do what um, is required of them. So, yeah. Right. Um, West Coast Tasman is another one to watch out for. I think Damien's doing fairly well there, and um, hopefully can um, you yeah, hang on to that. He's, He's in front after with a smaller number of votes counted. So that'll sure. be a close one tonight, too. Yeah. Now, you, of course, are not only the spokesperson for Labour's national campaign, but you're running your own local campaign. How's that gone for you? Yeah, good. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been a really good three years um, as one of the central MP. I've hugely enjoyed it, and it's been a real privilege. And, and I think, you know, going around the electorate, the work that I've been doing, hopefully, is, is, is you know, been seen by people. And so I'm optimistic about that. Um, interesting to see where the party vote ends up in Wellington Central. Um, it's going to be a three-way race there mm. with National, Labour and the Greens. Right. Yes.